Alright tech fans, this is Ryan with RG Tech here. Today we're going to take a look at the Exigmatic Skylat 240 all-in-one water cooling solution. So this unit was kindly provided by Exigmatech for review, so that's what we're going to do today. So uh, it is a 240 millimeter unit, meaning they have two 120 millimeter fans, look to be of static pressure possibly. Um, what's interesting about this AIO is that the pump is not located on the CPU block. It's actually located behind a fan mount on the radiator. So we're gonna get into that a little bit more in detail on the side of the box. You can see kind of their advertisement on that. Uh, moving on, moving on, uh, it is a uh, Skyla 240. It has all modern sockets except for AM4. I'm assuming if contacted that Exigma Tech does support AM4. It's just a little bit off of AM3 already, but everything else is supported on the Intel side, 2011, 1366, 1156, 55, 51, 50, even 775, which I don't understand why anymore, but um, the fans um, are rated for five to 2000 RPM with an 88.3 CFM. So quite a bit of, of cooling potential possibly is gonna be on this cooler itself. Um, the radiator is 274 by 122 by 32 millimeters thick. So it's a little thicker than normal AIOs. Um, it's made of aluminum for the radiator and the pump bearing type is ceramics, which is pretty typical. The pump speed also is at 3200 RPM plus or minus 10 RPM. So pretty accurate there. Um, they are toting that this is for extreme cooling. I guess we will see uh, on our testing here. Uh, <laughs> Since they're gonna throw it up on extreme cooling, I have Project Blue Devil, which is in its infancy stages right now, but I could rig it up inside of um, the Exigma Tech uh, case as well too. So you'll probably get a sneak peek of that other review that Exigma Tech did as well too. I'm just going to mount uh, my X99 setup in there, do a base test. I'll probably throw an RX 460 in it just to get the system going. I just wanna see uh, what kind of temps it brings in uh, and I'll be able to test the temps of the water cooling unit with the case as well too. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed and uh, yeah, we can take a look at the design. All right, pop the top here. And we are greeted with the water cooling system user's manual. So um, I would say all AIOs are pretty similar to each other. Um, I'll reference this if I have any difficulty installing. Um, all right, we're greeted by the fans. Like I said before, these look like they're static pressure fans. Um, the fans look to be of good quality. They have little rubber stoppers where the fan would mount up to your case uh, or even the radiator itself. So it can't uh, keep from the vibration. Uh, one downside is that they're not sleeved right off the bat, but they're black, so black, flat black cables. So. Um, and they are PWM controlled by the four pin PWM header. So that's kind of nice to see. Move those off the side. Uh, the accessory pack, you get some Tim. I don't know how good a Tim that is. You get a fan splitter, so you can actually run this off of one motherboard header. Um, I'm interested to see, is this a triple header? Because you have one power. Oh. So you plug this into your motherboard and then you can be able to feed those two PWM fans. So that's kind of nice, kind of nice to see, which is, Sleeved, oddly enough. Huh, probably because this is the only part you're gonna see in your motherboard. All right, um, like I said before, there is all the mounting plates, sans the AM4. Uh, I imagine that the AMD one might actually fit. It looks like it has enough fitment for AM4 mounting for Ryzen, so. I guess someone could try it. If I get a Ryzen sample, I will definitely be able to try it out on that. Um, moving on to the main event here. The IO itself. So right off the bat, you can see that the CPU block has a really, really low profile. Uh, I'm talking maybe about a half inch. Nice. Nice copper plate on that. Uh, the tubes are well, pretty movable. You, I bet you could put this in a small low form factor, a small form factor um, case, maybe the M case possibly. Um, 
if you're worried about water cooling, if you're not going to water cool the GPU, I think this would work out pretty well. Um, it's, it, it feels of good quality. Um, everything that looks, looks and feels pretty good quality. So let's move on to the radiator now. So now the radiators, this is where the real interesting part comes into play. Here's the pump. The pump is really interesting because it looks like it's behind an actual fan mount. So if I put a fan here, you can't even see where the pump is, which is pretty cool actually. Gives it kind of that stealth ghost look. It actually goes all the way through to the other side with a three pin header. Uh, which tells me that uh, pump is not controllable from the motherboard. You might be able to do it through voltage, but I'm guessing it's not that big of a deal if you run it run, let it run full blast all the time at that 3200 RPM. But again, you can mount your fans on either which way. It has no effect on it, which is kind of nice to see the dual compatibility of it. Huh. And then as far as the fin stack is concerned, they're pretty tight. Um, I've seen looser fin stacks, lower FPI. This looks to be of, of decent FPI. Um, I didn't see an FPI number on there, but I will clarify in the description below on what the FPI number is if I get that communication. So uh, moving around, um, then you see the rubberized tubing here. Um, and then you see a, uh, looks to be a fill port, which has got a rubber stopper built right into it. So uh, <laughs> I'm guessing somewhat if you want to top it off, I guess that's their service port possibly. So quite interesting. Uh, reminds me of the Cooler Master, um, uh, one of the, the, the 240M series and the 120M series that they had going, uh, which had that actual fill port on it. So quite interesting. Um, I guess what's left is to get this on a uh, system uh, and test her out. I am gonna throw it on my X99 Micro 2 uh, with a 5820K on it. Um, uh, it runs about 4.7 gigahertz on my overclock with about 1.35 volts. So I'll fire that up. I'll throw it in the Exigma Tech case um, to see what kind of thermals I'm looking at. Um, and we'll do a small little build in it. So we'll cut to that now and we'll be right back. All right, here's the Exigma Tech Scarlet 240 running on my test bench, which is consisting of a DVGA Z170 classified with a 6700K clocked at 4.7 gigahertz. Uh, 1.35 is the D-Core 2400 Crucial Ballistics RAM on there. It's a 4x4 kit of 16. And then it's an RX 460 on there. Just wanted to throw on a video card just to get it up and going. Um, I'm pretty impressed with this cooler. The fans are not loud at all. Pretty cool design on them. They're at full blast right now, which is a little over 2,000 RPM. Uh, only, only caveat I'd say this whole thing is, is that the cabling is not rated, which is kind of a norm you're starting to see in a lot of AIOs, but everything else is good. The tubing is just rubber. There's nothing fancy there. It's not sleeved or anything like that, but I do like the low profile block. It is really low profile. I mean, geez. <laughs> the VRM heatsink is actually taller than the actual block itself. So insulation went on pretty good um, because of the VRM layout on the Z170 classified. I kind of had to mount it upside down. So in an inverted case, it'd be just fine. But in a regular ATX style case, uh, you would probably have to look at the whole Exigma tech kind of like this. And I don't know, but <laughs> I wouldn't seem to mind. It doesn't seem to matter too much, but yeah, good cooler. I'm pretty impressed. Uh, it's been running Ada 64 for about seven minutes now. Um, normalized about 64, 68 is the package, 69 is the package. Not too bad. Uh, 4.64, 4.68. Um, let me click the 1.38 for the voltage here. So um, <laughs> CPU-Z is actually <laughs> registering something quite different. So I'll, I'll trust Elite right now. So, um, but yeah, running about 68 degrees on a 240 Skyla. 
Guys, I'm gonna end it here. If you uh, like the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. Uh, if you haven't been subscribed already, go ahead and give me a subscribe. Uh, you can't even imagine how much that helps me. So it helps me reach out to other manufacturers and providing quality reviews for you. So uh, with that said, I'm Ryan. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.